Hello, and we are here at day 40, the last day of our journey through the Gospel of John. And in this chap last chapter, chapter 21, we see Jesus appearing by the Sea of Galilee. Several of his disciples, six or seven of them are together, and Peter suggests that they do what they are so good at, fishing. And they agree that they would all go out together. They fished all night and caught nothing. Well, the next morning as they were approaching the shore, there was a man standing there. Jesus stood there, but they didn't realize it was him. He yelled out, catch any fish? No, they answered. So he told them to throw their nets out on the right side of the boat and they could catch some, which they did. And they caught so many that the net could barely hold them. This is the exact same miracle that happened when Jesus first called Peter to himself. Peter gave his life to following Jesus and was told from now on, you will be a fisher of men. Now as Jesus repair, prepares to return to his father, leaving the ministry of fishing for men to the disciples, he revisits this miracle. The disciples' memories must have flashed back to that day three years prior. For John turns to Peter and says, it's the Lord. <laughs> Peter is so excited. He grabs his outer coat, wraps it around himself, and he jumps into the water, jumps right out of the boat into the water, rushing towards Jesus. The rest of the disciples rowed ashore in the boat, dragging the net overflowing with fish with them. Upon arriving, they found that Jesus had started a fire and was grilling fish and some bread. He asked them to bring some of the fish that they had caught so they could eat breakfast together. John makes a point of telling us that they had caught 153 fish and the net still wasn't torn. There was no doubt that this was the Lord. Jesus served them bread and fish. And after they finished eating, Jesus turns to Peter and asks him, do you love me more than these? Referring to the disciples. Yes, of course, you know I do, Peter responds. Then feed my lambs, Jesus tells him. A second time, Jesus asks him, Peter, do you love me? Peter replies affirmatively, yes, Lord. So Jesus says, take care of my sheep. Finally, for a third time, Jesus asks Peter if he loves him. By now, Peter is hurt that Jesus has asked three times. Yet Peter responds, Lord, you know all things and you know that I love you. Jesus again says, feed my sheep. Jesus asked three times, corresponding to the three times that Peter denied him on the eve of his crucifixion. And yet Jesus calls Peter to follow him still and that he too would die for his faith. John ends his account accounting of the gospel by telling us that if all that Jesus had done had been recorded, there wouldn't be room for it in all the books of the world. I found myself tearing up several times as I read this passage. I am so like Peter, quick to act, quick to speak, slow to think. Whatever Peter does, he's all in. When Peter realized who was standing on the shore calling him to join him for breakfast, when he realized that Jesus had just performed the same miracle as he had the day he first called Peter to himself, he grabs his coat and he jumps in the water. They're still a hundred yards from the shore and in all his excitement to see Jesus again, he didn't wait for the boat. He didn't care about getting soaking wet. He lunged ahead to be with his savior. Then after the meal, which by the way, how sweet and tender of a moment to have breakfast with the risen Christ. So afterwards, Jesus doesn't rebuke Peter for denying him. He doesn't even bring it up directly. Instead, he asks him to affirm his love as many times as he denied him. And each time he gave him the charge he first gave him to care for God's people. Each time it was a washing of God's love and grace and forgiveness over each denial restoring him and reinstating him in his role and relationship with Christ. Let's pray that our excitement at seeing Christ in his word, in worship, and in prayer would be like that of Peter. May we also receive God's grace, love, forgiveness, and restoration at the feet of the risen Christ. I have so enjoyed spending this time with you in this gospel, and I encourage you to continue with your daily readings of God's word. God bless.